Welcome to the Open Forum in the Villages Florida podcast. In this show, we are going to talk to leaders in the community, leaders of clubs and interesting folks who live here in the villages to give perspectives of what is happening here in the villages. We hope to add a new episode most Fridays at 9 a.m. We have converted all of our shows to Buzzsprout. Of course, you can still listen to Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, and about 20 other podcast platforms. Your favorite podcast player will still work. We are now a listener-supported podcast. You can become a supporter for only $3 or you can choose to pay more per month. Go to openforminthevillages.com and click on support in the black box. There will be a shout out for supporters in episodes. This is a shout out to supporters, Tweet Coleman, Dan Capellan, Ed Williams, Alvin Stenzel, and major supporter Dr. Craig Curtis at K2 in the Villages. We will be hearing more from Dr. Curtis with short Alzheimer's tips each week. So this is Mike Roth. I'm back with Bob Baker. We're going to talk to Bob about his YouTube channel. And on that channel, he's doing positive affirmations and self-talk. Bob, how did you get started doing that? Well, that's a great question because this is uh, something I only started doing six years ago. So it, it, and it opened up this whole new chapter of my life that I never saw coming, but it's been a great blessing. So basically, I got on YouTube in actually 2006, which was mm-hmm. the second year it was even in existence. And for the first decade, I was doing a hodgepodge of different things. You know, our, if people listen to the previous two episodes of your podcast, they know about, you know, I've published books. I've, I've, uh, I've done a lot of things in the arts. And so mm-hmm. my channel is just a, a wide array of things related to, to my life. There was no real focus on it, but I still managed to get about 3,500 subscribers by the end of 2016. And then just a little backstory real quick. I've always been a student of personal development back as far back as high school when I was struggling with insecurity and all that. I, a friend of mine gave me a, one of, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with an author named Wayne Dyer. It was very... Yes. Pro- prolific at what his very first popular book was called Your Erroneous Zones. And that was just opened my eyes to a new way of thinking about how we use our thoughts and our feelings and our behaviors and how they and how we, we have we're not just a victim of our thoughts. You know, it was like the first book or first time I realized that, like, if I'm feeling insecure, it's not that's not necessarily who I am. It's just what I'm thinking and feeling at, you know, that, it's at interesting that time. You mentioned that because I was looking at the show statistics of these roughly 70 shows that we've, we've got we've done so far in this series mm-hmm. and one of the highest ones rated in terms of listens especially in the first two weeks was the power of the subconscious mind oh wow hmm. so there's an interest in that people were seeking it out perhaps. seeking it out and it, it's way way above the the number three show Oh, cool. Well, this, I think this will come back when I, yeah, there's, I, I can tie this into what I'll share with my YouTube channel. So I've, so, I, and over the years, I was in and out of that. So I've, you know, I've used so many things over the years, you know, goal setting, visualization, meditation. I've done af- affirmations on my own for many years. So for decades. Vision boards. Oh, yeah, v- yeah, vision boards. Sam um, was very into yeah. that, the, the <laughs> franchise that I taught people for 25 yeah. years. And so, and by around 2015, 2016, I was kind of going through a little bit of a, of, of a funk with things were evolving with my solo entrepreneurial career with my books, which we've talked about in previous episodes. And I was, uh, and then I was, and so as a result, I was also kind of struggling financially and, you know, I was behind a, a few months and paying the mortgage. And so I was kind of at a low point seeking out something to raise my own energy level and vibration mm-hmm, and, op- mm-hmm. and optimism. And so I was seeking things out on YouTube, looking for affirmations or guided meditations on abundance and prosperity and things like like that, and not really happy with a lot of what I was finding. You weren't happy. With We're it. not happy. Yeah, I was just kind of you know. A lot of times, entrepreneurs find things when they seek something out and can't find it. They create it themselves, right? Right. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. probably twelve or fifteen years ago, a book came out in a video called "The Secret." Ah, uh, yes. What did you think of that? I yeah, I was. I think it came out maybe around two thousand four ish or or something. Yeah, I think it did a great. Uh, and the the secret was no secret at all. It's been around for thousands of of years. Think and grow rich. 
Yeah. Uh, as a man thinketh, you know, it, and, and Earl Nightingale, I don't know if you're familiar with Earl Nightingale, sure. he, he kind of launched the whole audiobook personal development industry in the 50s. He came out with a vinyl record called The Strangest Secret, which was, and it boiled down to him, we become what we think about, was his, mm-hmm. his whole mon, mon, mantra. And so, so yeah, this, the secret movie and book were just a, a new iteration of that. So I think it did a great job of getting, and it was so popular, you know, it became so popular. Some people really liked it. And believed it and other people were repelled by it. Yeah. And I think and I think a lot of even people that were in the movies, I've actually had the, a blessing to know some of the folks that were in the movie, like Jack Canfield, Michael Beckwith, Joe Vitale, those are all people that I've crossed paths with. And they and one thing it leaves out is the act or what it didn't leave leave it out, but it didn't stress it enough was the action part of, mm-hmm. of that. You have to combine these positive thoughts and visualizations with actions in the real world. I've always been very practical when it comes to this to, to this stuff. So but I think this re- remind it did a good job of reminding people of the power of their thoughts because we all we all are, are we all tend to live our lives on autopilot you know uh, and so that, that's one aspect of our brains that I've discovered that serves us well um, like for instance if I had to consciously think about how to brush my teeth or get dressed or drive the car or what you know steps to to take every time that would really be <laughs> our lives would be consumed with those with that min- minutia. But once we learn a pattern, we can do it kind of subconsciously, or um, and so we can focus our brain power on other things. So that serves us well in practical ways like that. But we also can get stuck in patterns of thinking: Are we do it, seeing the glass is half empty versus half full? Um, and there are people who go, "Well, I'm just being realistic. That's the way." But but, but you, you know both. Uh, half empty and half full of wrong. <laughs> In what way? They're both the same, right? Or, well, they're, they're both wrong. Yeah, they're both wrong. How's that? They- because the glass is always 100% full. It's got a certain percentage of air in it and a certain percentage of water. That's, that is, that's a good way to look at it, yeah. That's the way I look at it. And so you're, you're just a glass full kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, it's a question of what's it full of. You know? Right, exactly. exactly. And some people are full of better stuff than others, you know. Yeah. And some people are just full of it. Right. <laughs> So to me, this whole like real, just being real, realistic, we all are just living. And I I talk about it in the book that I published related to this called uh, The Power of Affirmations and Positive Self-Talk and Mm -hmm. point out how we're all viewing the world through this lens this filter that we have developed over the years through our experiences, through our thoughts, through our patterns, you know, what people told us, what our parents, you know, well, they we're, our... we're a product of what happened in our family 75 years ago. Right. And that got beat into us as a kid. Right. And, you know, we're used to that. And that's what we think that's our reality, right? But everyone has a different perception of reality. And so I think that through that you can't, if you don't like the way you're viewing the world, if your life, the circumstances of your life is not exactly where you want it to be, I think you have more people just sort of give in. And this is, this is my, this is my lot in life. But I think you actually do have power to change that. And it's a combination of thoughts and actions. And so, but I, so what I focus on, I guess, with the YouTube, so what, what I did, I should back go back to tw- late 2016 is I when I said I, I just I'm not resonating with some of the voices that I'm finding doing these affirmations mm-hmm. doing these guided meditations so I thought I know my way around a microphone I had the you know I've been a musician for years I've been podcasting like you I had the equipment and the software so I said I'm gonna start recording some stuff just putting it out there not even there's no business plan or anything just curious does anybody care you, you know resonate with my voice and I put some things out there and it really kind of turned my I went a few weeks went by and I checked the stats. I said, oh, these things are getting a few more views. Now, these are podcasts or YouTubes? These were YouTube. Yeah, I, I recorded my voice, added of some visuals, and put it up on my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Right. And then that was the first time that I'd done that. And I was really nervous about it, too, because it was so different than the things I'd done previously that I was thinking that people were going to go, what are you doing, Bob? This is kind of woo-woo. <laughs> You know? so, so how do people find you? Well, so dovetailing back to what you said earlier about your most popular podcast was about the power of the subconscious mind. Mm-hmm. What I've done is I'm I'm blessed that I create content that people are actively seeking out. And once I saw that these things were resonating with people, it took me like really like nine months to a year before I totally saw that this was a viable thing. And mm-hmm. then I just took a deep dive into learning best practices. And there's, there's there are actually a ton of YouTube channels 
devoted to how to build a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. You know, and th they, they tell you things about titles and thumbnails and descriptions and tags and all that stuff and best practices. And so I learned how to label things in a way like what are people searching for? Like this is I've actually given workshops on how to build a, a YouTube channel where you got to put yourself in the shoes of a person who's in need of this type of material. What are the, what words are they putting into YouTube to, to seek this stuff out and make sure your titles represent that, mm -hmm. right? And and then things that you say in the video uh, back, back that up. This is today's brain health tip from Dr. Craig Curtis. Dr. Curtis, how important is it for people to keep their brain sharp? It's extremely important. So we all lose a little bit of our cognitive abilities as we age. Mm -hmm. Everyone's brain starts shrinking in our 50s. However, we can still maintain good cognitive health into old age by making a few good daily choices, including <laughs> keeping your brain active, crossword puzzles, Sudoku, just getting out and socializing is good for the brain. Good. Thank you, Dr. Curtis. You're welcome. And the beauty, and I love, uh, I've been active online and social media. I'm on all the, you know, I got, I got Instagram and Twitter and even on TikTok and all this stuff. Uh, but I, what I love about YouTube, what sets it apart is that it's the word, it's, it's owned by Google. Mm -hmm. So it's the world's second largest search engine. So people go there, unlike how they use Facebook and other platforms, they go there to look for things. Mm -hmm. And once, and once you find things that you like, then it starts serving you up more things like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I take advantage of that. You know, I, I, I realized I just play into what YouTube is, how they're trying to serve their viewers. And so... So how many people are listening to your YouTube channel now? Yeah. So I kind of met, mentioned I was right, right around 3,500 when I started, when I posted my first affirmation video in late 2016. Before long, like within a year, it got to 20,000. Then it doubled and it went to 40,000. Six months later, it went to 80,000. I remember a few, uh, three years ago, I hit the 100,000 subscriber mark where they sent you the silver plaque, which mm -hmm. is really cool. So I said, hey, this is, this is, this is getting viable. I think as of this morning, as we're recording this, it's around, it's close to 100, or, I'm sorry, it's close to 340,000 subscribers. And also in the total views across the entire channel every month, it's like 1.2 million views a month so, of all the videos. Right. You know? so, so have you monetized these? I do. Yes. So I there's a minimum threshold that you need to, as far as like uh, we call it v, um, subscribers and watch time that you have to achieve to to apply to be a, what's called a YouTube partner. I, I, I hit that many years ago, mm -hmm. even before I started doing the affirmations. And then what, well, one of the perks of being a partner is that you uh, can allow YouTube to run ads on your videos. I have no idea what ads, you know, or, or I have no control over who is and isn't. And it's and most of them are those little ads that you can skip, you know, mm -hmm. at, at the beginning. And they and basically Basically, YouTube will split what any re ad revenue that they collect with the creator. It's mm -hmm. like a 50-50 split, which is pretty is pretty is pretty nice. Now there might be a penny per monet, what they call a monetized view. Right. So a small channel it doesn't add up to much. But when you have a million views a month, it's the primary way that I support or we support our household. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've been consistently posting about two new pre-recorded affirmation videos every week, and then every Sunday, my wife Pookie and I stream live. Uh, every Sunday morning from anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes. And while those live streams are not the most popular videos, they have this like community that we're building. Mm -hmm. that they, you know, hundreds of people show up every Sunday. It's kind of kind of like it, we don't call it church or ministry. It's not it's not based on any religion or, or spiritual practice or, or whatever. But people call it their church. You know, there, there are a couple of people in the villages producing a YouTube channel video like that about once a week. Oh, cool. Yeah, right, so. newcomers to the village is, uh, is one that comes to mind. Nice. Oh, yeah. There's any topic you think of, there's somebody doing a YouTube channel on it, you know, probably a dozen. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> dozens. I mean, my, my 3D hobby, 3D printing hobby is uh, yeah. totally consuming uh, those those YouTube videos on how to and what to do if. Yeah. But I never saw, like I said, I, there was no business plan. I never saw this coming. But I've, and so I previously had some modest success online in particular as an author. You know, I had, you know, mm -hmm. thousands of people around the, the world who benefited from a lot of the books that I published prior to this era of my life. And I felt I was, you know, yeah, making an impact and felt good about that. But this is like 10x or more of that as far as, far as volume, number of people I'm reaching. And it's just really satisfying to be able to, make a living doing something that's genuinely helping people. Mm -hmm. And the the comments 
I mean, just, uh, that I get from people that literally will like will queue up, and you know, you're a voice guy, you know. Sure. Uh, that, but the people that literally will queue up my voice every morning, and it gets it, and many for many people, it's gotten them through really dark periods in their lives when they were at a low point. How long is each one of your affirmation videos? <laughs> They are the standard. I play around with length, but around ten minutes is actually a, a, an average. And so I don't. They're not really long, so I, it's kind of geared for people who maybe not have. Yeah, we just want to want something to boost them when they first get up in the morning. And some people play them before they get out of bed or after they make their coffee. You know, mm-hmm. and that's really the best time to set the tone for the day instead of just launching into your day, start reacting to things and checking. Well, email. get stuff into your subconscious mind. Yeah, you say, "Oh, well, how do I want to feel today? Yeah, hey, how? What, what? And like, and I." There's simple aff- aff- affirmations like today I'm going to look for and appreciate the good. You know, instead of looking for reasons to be offended, which a lot of people have that leaning. Mm-hmm. You know, I want, maybe I'm going to find I'm going to find the, the good things to celebrate, kind gestures. You know, things to be happy and and uh, and, and be grateful for. Have you ever stumbled into? Uh, Dr. Eric Stoltz and his adversity quotient books. That rings a bell, but I'm not overly, overly familiar. No. Yeah. His whole theory uh, with the difference between high performers and low performers mm-hmm. is that the high performers have the ability to recover from adversity rapidly. Right. And low performers take the adversity as that's the way it's going to be forever. Right. And they have a slow recovery time. Right. So, so it's all about reframing failure. I think Tony Robbins has talked about this a lot over the years. You didn't fail. You, you, you did something. You got a result. Well, that's the Edison theory that, you know, the failure in the experiment right. to build a light bulb happened uh, 100,000 times. Yeah. But he kept going until he learned what didn't work. And then he did something that was different that did work. He said, I successfully figured out 999 ways <laughs> that you can't, yeah, that, that, that won't work. So you, you reframe that into learning, you know, what's the lesson here and how can I do better next time? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's all, it's like, like you, yeah, you're, maybe you're playing tricks with your mind. But if like people say, oh, you're just being delusional if you're looking, you know, for rainbows. And, but I think we're all being delusional in our own way. And I figured if I'm going to be delusional, why not do it in a way that's going to empower me <laughs> where I'm going to have fun? Fun and enjoy life instead of being mad at everything all the time, you know, or sure, or down, sure. you know, down, downtrodden. But I like to get, I take a very realistic approach, and yeah, and if you do, there's no doubt that life can be challenging and that we all have hardships. And I never encourage people to just look the other way or bury your head in the, in the sand. When ne- those negative things come up, you should fully feel them, you know, death of a loved one or a pet, or you know, you get fired from a job, you know, fully feel that frustration. But don't make it part of your story. That's the thing that people like get into this victim mode where they just, anyone who listens, they'll tell them about how they've been wronged and it becomes part of their identity. Well, you got to move on. Right, exactly, yeah. Yeah. That, have that resilience, right? Right. To, and that's one of the things that I learned from Stoltz is that you have to stop for a moment, mm-hmm. think, I have a high adversity quotient. How do I move on from here? What mm-hmm. did I learn? What do I got to do differently? Exactly. And then you move on and... Like, and you do know, better the next time. Exactly. And you don't deny those things ever happened to you, but it's like, what am I going to do from here? Exactly. And so that's why, I, yeah. And I and I just think that main, like we all have, we all are influenced by what we expose ourselves to, and that's like the media. You know, what type of music are we listening to? The people in our lives, in in particular, are they encouraging us? Are they you know, are they watering down our ambitions? And so the more you can stay in that positive realm um, and expose yourself to things that will uplift you, podcasts, music, mm-hmm. uh, aff- aff- affirmations, all of it um, just builds your optimism and your sense of, I can do this, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And I don't know what it was because like I was raised by a single mom and she wasn't like particularly entrepreneurial or ambitious necessarily. But there was just something within me that was always willing to, when I saw something, that's how I did so many things in the arts, which mm-hmm. we talked about in an early episode. I would see people, somebody doing something, playing in a band or doing stand up or doing improv. I go, that would be so fun to do. What do I need to do? What steps can I take to make that happen sooner rather than later? And, and without waiting for somebody to give me permission to do it, you know? I create my own. So you saw a model, mm-hmm. whether it's a musician or an improver, and then you decided to do what it was necessary to do to make yourself match the model. Yeah, 
but not necessarily following the ingredients or the other the, because the typical model was like like uh, for instance um I, i've always used the, the example of uh, open mic nights when i first started doing stand-up in, in my 20s mm-hmm. it was a weekly open mic night right and so was, you, you did op- you did stand up i did stand up for like a 15 year period off and on i did song parodies and, and and funny original songs too with my guitar and singing but a lot of so uh, like a lot of open micers you could you know getting a few minutes on stage once a week that's not a lot to develop your you know you need a lot of stage time you need a lot of stage time you need a lot of practice you need to repeat the stuff that works and right dump the stuff that doesn't work record yourself and yeah listen and and all that so i did all those things but most did you walk around with a a pen and pencil to write down your ideas during the day and week i probably had a way to capture them in some way yes Okay. Yes, and I had a little cassette, little mini cassette, like uh, not quite a walk, a walk, but I would record my, I'd set it on a stool on the stage and record mm-hmm. my early routines and listen back and figure out how I could tweak things, you know. Yeah, and where did the audience laugh and right. where was it growing? I got to drop that one or I need a different, a better setup or a different way to deliver it, pause before I deliver the punchline or, you know, all that good that good stuff. Yeah, here in but, the villages, we, uh, when I see a stand-up, Who's not recording what they're doing? Mm-hmm. See, yep, you're not going to learn, not, or they're going to learn very slowly, <laughs> right. very slowly. But, but back then, a lot of the open micers were complaining about, oh, the like the funny bonus was our club in, in St. Louis. They should do more. It's like what, like they were victims. Like, oh, they should do more for us. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask a better question. I'm going to ask, like, what do I, what do I want? So I want is more stage time. Okay, that leads to the question: How can I get more stage time? Um, and it led to us. What that led to is I, I had just met uh, uh, a friend of mine was bartending at this club it was in South St. Louis, and I met the owners of, of, of the. And I went there, and I on a Wednesday night, and which is kind of dead during the week. There, mm-hmm. most of their things were bands on the on the weekends where they brought the crowds in. And I said, "What are you doing here on Wednesday nights?" Because I think open mic night was Tuesday. At the funny bone, mm-hmm. I said nothing. What? what why? <laughs> why? Why? Yes. Yeah. So what if I brought in a comedy show? I'll host it. I'll arrange it. I'll book the talent or bring, or bring the talent in. We'll charge five bucks at the door. I'll take that money. It won't cost you a thing. But I'll try to bring a crowd in. And they said, "Great, sure. We're not doing any anything else." And so I got stage time. I got my open mic friends to come and 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 play perform make mostly for for free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, my when I formed an improv group around that same year, that we, we uh, stand up comics uh, did the first half, and, and our improv group did the second half. And there were some nights it was yeah, it took a while to build. Mm-hmm. But I created my own circumstance that I that I want instead of waiting for someone else to create one for me. That's just always sort of driven me. But that comes from both thoughts and actions, you know. Thoughts, <laughs> actions. Yeah. So yeah, if I had just looked at the negative, I just would have been a complainer, continue to be a victim, you know. Mm-hmm. But instead I kind of took my created the circumstances that I that I wanted. You know. So Good. that's that's my story and I'm sticking to it, Mike. <laughs> and and why don't, Bob, why don't you tell our listeners how to find your YouTube channel. It's simply my name. So it's Bob Baker, B-A-K-E-R. If you're logged into your YouTube account or in your app on your phone and you start typing in my name, the first suggestion will be Bob Baker Affirmations. Go ahead and click that. You'll see my my lovely mug there with the, the silver hair. <laughs> And, and you can uh, sub- subscribe from right there and then go to the channel and just start checking out tons of, yeah. And, oh, you know, I, did, I, I think I hit a new milestone. I have eight videos that now have over a million views each. The, the most popular one, over six and a half million views, the most most popular one. What but was just, the subject of that one? It was, uh, not surprisingly, it was on abundance and prosperity. Yeah, the money affirmations are very popular. Gratitude affirmations are popular. And confidence, success, those those kind of all in the upper tier. So I tend to do a lot. I just hit those from a lot of different angles mm-hmm. in different, for, in different form, 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 formats. Yeah, people always want to make more money, <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah. And we were talking about stand-up for a minute. I'll just give two suggestions to people. One is they read the Kevin Hart book on how Kevin became a stand-up comic. Mm. It is a great book. It's also on Audible. And the other book that I always recommend, and a few people actually take me up on the recommendation, it's called The Improv Nation. Oh, right. And that is really the story, history, going all the way back to Spolin. Uh, Viola Spolin. Yes, the originator of, of improv in the 1930s. Yeah. During the Depression. And... All the way through Saturday Night Live, and Aykroyd and Bellucci and Viola. Viola's son was called as Paul Sills, yes. and he he took up you know actually his mom's work, and he was one of the co-founders of uh, Second City in 1959 in Chicago. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. I've learned a lot about that history. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's fascinating. Fascinating uh, business. I'm glad you got a chance to talk about your success on YouTube. Absolutely. And Bob, thanks again for being on the show. It's been a pleasure here. Everybody stay positive. Stay positive. Okay. Remember, our next episode will be released next Friday at 9 a.m. Should you want to become a major supporter of the show or have questions, please contact us at mike at rothvoice.com. If you know someone who should be on the show, contact us at mike at rothvoice.com. We thank everyone for listening to the show. The content of the show is copyrighted by Roth Voice 2023, all rights reserved.